church. Is it a great morning to be in the house of God? I'm going to invite everybody to stand up. Now that you sat down, I was just waiting on you to sit down. <laughs> oh, Father, we just thank you, Lord, that this is a wonderful, beautiful day. This season we are in. Father, let everybody feel the spirit of giving. Your spirit, your generosity spirit, your mercy and grace. Oh, Father, we thank you that you are here with us today. Everybody that's online, I want them to feel your spirit right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord, this morning. Yeah. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and down. Let's give them a big hand. Come on. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much, worship team. You may be seated today. If you, uh, let's greet our online church this morning. Welcome them to the bridge. Come on. Well, the other 12 of you do it now. Come on. Let's say good morning. Welcome. There you go. Thank you for your help. I need a lot of help, don't I? Amen. Good to see everybody today in God's house. And uh, thankful for God's presence already. He's already here, right? I'm waiting on you. Come on now. He is already here. Uh, if you are a guest today at the Bridge Church, we'd like to say welcome. If this is your first time or you've been coming for six weeks or less, if you could, this is a tithe envelope. They're there in the seat back in front of you. If you could pull one of those out and give us a little information about yourself, we greatly appreciate that. At the end of the service, you can drop that in the boxes in the back, and then we have some buckets up here on the platform, okay? Let's all stand all over the house. Let's go find somebody we don't know and get to meet people today and greet them and tell them you're glad to see them, right?
folks. Praise the Lord. Make a couple announcements if they would help me in the media booth. Uh, I need a lot of help. And uh, let's talk about the youth canned food drive. Can we do that? Our teenagers are asking our church family to bring canned goods. And on the eve of Christmas Eve, that Saturday, they're going around the community and filling all the food boxes, if you're familiar with that, that are scattered around town. And they're going to distribute. So if you could bring canned goods, and I won't have to go to Walmart, bring anything that somebody, I think about being homeless, you know what I'm saying, or people that have need. Uh, sometimes they don't have a way to cook or something, anything like that. And uh, not everybody knows how to live off the, off the land. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I'd still be fat, right? The, uh, so get some canned goods, and I won't have to go to Walmart and stock up, all right? And uh, let's talk about Christmas Eve candlelight communion. On Sunday, January, oh, boy, that was a five-syllable word, January, I'm sorry, December 24. December 24, Christmas Eve. There we go. I'm in the right month. I jumped ahead. We have a January announcement here in just a moment. But um, we have candlelight communion at 10 a.m. here in the sanctuary. And uh, that day we won't have kids' services or youth service. It's a family service. And uh, it's a good service to bring your family to, your neighbors. Uh, it's a good recruiting service where you can go out and ask people, a co-worker. Uh, you can even bring your enemy to this meeting, and they'll survive, okay? And uh, so you be thinking about praying about people that you can encourage them to be in God's house and celebrate Christmas this year, right, by going to church, right? And uh, that'll be a, it's a good way to do that. And we abbreviate the service, and it'll, it'll most likely be only one hour. I'm not sure. We really haven't discussed that, but now that I've said that, I'll have to, right? That's the best way to commit yourself instead of indulge yourself, right? So praise the Lord. Uh, this is the first time up on January 20. That's why I was in January because I looked down and saw the date. Uh, at 10 a.m., that is a Saturday morning at 10 a.m. right here in the sanctuary, right? Okay. Susan Means is going to be our guest speaker that day for our, the women's ministry, the women of the bridge. And there have I'm, I'm just going to... The theme for our women's ministry is Be Prepared 2024, and it's an opportunity to worship. Our worship leader that day is Kathy. Wave at everybody. Kathy Proctor's niece. You're not the worship leader, but Kathy's niece. <laughs> I wouldn't do that to you. Uh, Darlene Allison is going to be leading worship that Saturday morning. And I, I'm just going to tell you, the place will be full of the presence and the power of God. And uh, there's, there's going to be a great anointing here, a great time of ministry. And as a, as a girl in this house, we encourage you, bring your teenage girls. I just extended that. You know, if you have girls in your family that are younger, uh, they're still a lady, right? I'll wait on you. That's Harper over there, right? And uh, so make plans to be here and make plans to have some of your friends with you. And uh, we'll be praying. And God's going to move in a wonderful way, and y'all will have a great time. Everybody say, great time. Good, good. Praise the Lord. Let's stand all over the house, and uh, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Could you just play Holy Spirit rain down quietly? If y'all want to sing quietly, would you just whatever, however y'all can make that come out? We're going to build a bridge into worship this morning. I just really, yesterday, the Holy Spirit just kind of pressed on my heart for that. Uh, we don't normally do it this way, but I want to be obedient to the Holy Spirit. Would you just lift your hands this morning? And would you welcome God in his presence and his power? What that means is, is you need to align your heart and your mind with the, what God wants to do today in this room. This room has an impact that is right here live today. It goes from there. There are people online that are going to receive this, and it's going to minister to them. We want the presence of God 
on our online church. And there are people scattered around the world that will come into this service app sometime and they'll attend church, right? The member in our church, I call them members because I've adopted them, is Pastor Nagarjuna in India. Greetings to him and his family, one of my sons in the ministry. Lord, we just ask, come on, invite him in. If you open the door to your home and someone was there, what would you say? Hey, how are you doing today? Welcome, come on in. We need to have a spirit of hospitality to welcome the Lord here. Don't resist him. Let him have his way. Let him do what he wants to do. Say yes to him today. Lift your hand up. Just say, Lord, I welcome you and I praise you. I bless you today. Worship is not about me. It's about him. Worship the Lord as the worship team leads us this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Let your power fall. Let your voice be heard. Come and change our hearts as we stand on your word. Holy Spirit, rain down. Holy Spirit, rain down. Holy Spirit.
loved you nothing else nothing else nothing else will do i just want you nothing else nothing else nothing else will
your hands up to him today. This morning, exalt him. He is holy. He is holy. Hallelujah. Worship the Lord. Oh, God, prepare our hearts today, Lord. Prepare our hearts for your coming. Prepare our hearts for the coming of your word, Lord. That the word be released today into our hearts and adjust our lives. Change the way we think. Change the way we live, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. If you have a, a physical condition, if you need healing in your body today, I just feel a release by the Holy Spirit to pray for you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord, you see every life. You see everyone that's here today and what's going on in their world, Lord. If you have an emotional problem, a financial problem, a physical problem, if you're having challenges somewhere personally, glory to God. There's somebody here who's like a dark cloud, a clamp even, just on your head, holding you back. It's like you can't break through. Go free in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, God. Go free in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Father God, in your mighty name, Lord, touch bodies today and heal them, Lord. Heal the brokenhearted. Jesus proclaimed in the temple that he came to heal the brokenhearted. Yes, he did. Let him heal your broken heart today. Your disappointments, your missed appointments, let God heal all of that. He can take you right where you are and do great and mighty things in your life. Let him elevate you right now, today, in this moment. Be, be lifted up. As the Lord is lifted on high, he's drawing you to him. Stand up, rise up, get ready, move forward, right? Thank you, Jesus. Lord, heal the brokenhearted today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Lord, those that need a financial touch on their business or on their household, Lord, we thank you that you are our provider. In Jesus' name, we give you glory for that, Father. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to pray for a few people this morning. Julie Hart had surgery Thursday, came home Friday. She's at home resting today. She could be online. Julie, we love you. We bless you. We pray for you. Complete and total healing in your body. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Uh, Nathan Stewart has been having some tests run. There are a couple things, and the doctors are trying to make sure. He's a young man. They're trying to make sure he did not have a stroke. I want you to agree with me today. I'm laying hands on his name. You release your faith toward Nathan today. Nathan, be healed in Jesus' name. I decree no stroke in your body, no symptoms of a stroke, and you will never have a stroke in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. One of our online church families, uh, Mindy Moore and her family, they are, uh, her daughter Sarah has been trying to have a baby, and um, they are doing uh, embryo implantation. And if I remember right, there are only two eggs. Everybody hold up two fingers. Lord, I want to thank you for twins, for Sarah. I want to thank you for a baby in Jesus' name, Lord. A healthy baby. Glory to God. I break the curse that is on this generation to destroy life. And Lord, this woman has a desire to have children. I speak for children in her life in Jesus' name. We'll give you the glory, Lord. We received a request from the Wirtz family. Charlotte and the boys are home, not feeling well. Lord, we lift up this family to you. Heal them in Jesus' name. Cleanse their house. Heal their bodies. I rebuke sickness and disease in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Brother Charles Proctor has missed the last two Sundays. He made it to Baptist. Uh, he actually went to the Heart Hospital Friday. He's now at Baptist in Little Rock. They're running some tests. Uh, they've given him blood. He's losing blood. But how many of you know the Lord can plug that up? Come on, somebody. No more loss of blood. Come on, say that. No more loss of blood in Charles's body in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, I thank you that by medicine or by miracle, 
I speak resurrection power into Charles' body. Strength return, health return. In the mighty name of Jesus, glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, I'm thankful I have a God that I can lean on, I can cry out to in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, God. Lord, we give you the praise. Can we just thank him today? Let's clap to the Lord. Amen. Oh, hallelujah, God. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. We thank you. Praise the Lord Jesus. Amen. God bless you this morning. You may be seated. Hallelujah. God's good, is he not? Amen. The Lord is greatly to be praised. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, worship team. Great job today. We appreciate you. Come on, tell them thank you. <clears throat> Amen. Let me get a little swig of some white lightning in here. I'll, ah, that'll make it right. Amen. Praise the Lord. I've never drank white lightning. I've been around it when they're making it. it uh, but we'll stop right there. I don't want anybody to have to go to jail for a crime 50 years ago, right? Praise the Lord. Well, it'd be longer than that. I was a kid. <laughs> Hallelujah. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Uh, oh, thank you, Lord, for your strength and your power, Lord, your goodness and your mercy. Amen? Amen. In the seat back in front of you, we have tithe envelopes. If you would take one of those, we're going to receive our morning tithes and offerings. Could we give joyfully unto the Lord? Amen? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. The, uh, inside this tithe envelope, you can put your information. This envelope is actually, you can mail it in. Boy, they're way ahead of me. Go, girl. This is probably the first time I've done it, right? I normally just go on with the offering and forget. And uh, you can go to our church website. There's a giving feature there, thebridgefs.com. And uh, when you go there, you can click give at the top or scroll down. There's a giving feature there. If you have a smartphone, it will let you know how dumb you are, right? And uh, they can mess up quick. I tried to get something done. I searched the internet trying to figure it out yesterday. I gave up, right? And just did something different, right? And, uh, but if you have a smartphone, we have an app that we use called Tithely. And you can go there, create an account one time, and after that, you can go there and give. There's always a way to give here at the bridge. You can uh, drive up 24-7 in the office door is the last door to my right, your left, all the way on the, that's the north end of the building for the, those of y'all who are directionally challenged, and uh, you can, there's a mail slot there, you can put it in, we'll find it when we open the office, or if we're here, you're welcome to knock on the door, and we'll even go get you something to eat if you want to hang out, right, and uh, you can come fellowship with us, right, amen, and uh, we like fellowship, we like people, right, if you're going to be a pastor, you better like people, right? And uh, that's the way that works. If you're going to be a Christian, you need to like people. Uh-oh. I done quit offering and went to preaching, right? Hallelujah. That just came up out of my spirit. Just take it as it is, right? So we want to encourage you to be faithful. Uh, this is a very faithful, giving church. We're very blessed, and we thank God for that. And uh, we want you to be a giver with us. One And that's what this, this month our series is on, the indescribable gift of Jesus Christ. Amen? We're going to be talking about that in just a few minutes. But I want to encourage you to be a giver today. Uh, tithes, offerings, blessings. We give a lot of money. We help a lot of people on the mission field. And uh, they're doing a good job there. And we thank God for what they're doing. Amen? And uh, so you be a part and be a giver here at the bridge we encourage you to do that. Amen? Hallelujah. Take your envelope, hold it in your hand. If your spouse is here with you, y'all can get to hold hands now, okay? And uh, the wives all did this, the husbands went, right? <laughs> hold her hand, men. Let's pray over this offering. In the mighty name of Jesus, I speak blessings on this offering. Bless both the gift and the giver. God, I'm asking you to do Mighty works with our finances and our homes, our businesses, our jobs. Hallelujah. I drove through Chaffee Crossing declaring the other day we were headed uh, toward Charleston for a, a funeral. And, and as we went, I just was decreeing jobs and better jobs, businesses coming into Fort Smith for this region. 
and increase in our economy here locally in Jesus' name. I just feel like we need to bless our schools this morning. Can we do that? We speak blessings over our public and our Christian schools this morning in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray over the churches in this region, Lord, in this river valley that are preaching the gospel, preaching the word. I ask you to bless them financially, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I know you have more than enough, and I'm asking their people, their churches crying out right now, Lord, they are in need, and we lift them up. Bless them with finances, bless them with souls, bless them with leaders. How many of you know what you sow, you reap? Come on, church. Amen. Glory to God in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, bless, Lord, every family. Glory. Hallelujah, Lord. I just need to do this, too. I speak to our kids that are not serving God and obeying his word. We speak to the prodigals. Come home in Jesus' name. Come home in Jesus' name. Do a mighty work in their hearts, Lord. We give you the glory. Lord, bless this offering. Bless this day. Bless Bridge Kids and Bridge Youth as they go to their classes today, Lord. Anoint the teachers and the leaders there and use them, Lord, uh, to just help uh, train up disciples. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen. Amen. This is the way that we give at the bridge. If you'd stand with us, we're going to make a declaration of faith. And, uh, and then I'll tell you what to do. I, having you keep your envelope so you can lift it up. Some of them already done it. Some of them didn't have an envelope, but that's okay. The Lord's going to spank them, right? Amen. Come on now. You can look on the screens and follow me. As we obey and give the Lord's tithes and offerings, we believe the Lord for jobs and better jobs, raises, bonuses, and benefits, sales and commissions, settlements, estates, and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, gifts, debts demolished, and royalties received. Heavenly Father, we thank you that every chair here is filled with a person. We seek to be a debt-free church and a debt-free people in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We declare this by faith, Lord. Hallelujah. Now, the close of the service, if you want to get there quick, you can bring it down. It doesn't bother me. We have buckets on the platform and boxes at the exit doors. You may be seated. Bridge kids and bridge youth, it's your turn now. Awesome. Awesome. Well, two of you clapped. I was getting something put in my mouth, right? Hallelujah. You don't clap and bless them, we're going to send you back there to work with them. <laughs> uh, no. Hallelujah. That changed the atmosphere, didn't it? Amen. I want to say thank you to our worship team. They're doing a great job. Appreciate the, the Christmas music they're sprinkling in with our regular worship. I want to thank the decor team. Look around. And uh, they've done a really good job. And uh, just making it look Christmassy. And uh, they'll get finished about the 23rd of December before the candlelight communion, right? They'll figure it's, uh, did my wife leave? Maybe she won't hear me say this, but she'll keep working on it till she gets it just like she wants it, right? And right now it's, honey, we got to go do this, right? And honey goes, right? Let me get a little drink. Yeah. Bubba's smarter than he looks. It, uh, praise the Lord. It's all right to laugh in church and in life. Amen. Let's go to in your Bibles. If you go to 2 Corinthians, this is our theme verse through the 24th. I think I'm going to shift. I think the Lord gave me something yesterday to shift with for the end of the year. It's going to be pretty powerful. And uh, whew, hallelujah. But I ain't going there right now. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 15. Today we're going to talk about the indescribable gift. This is our Christmas season series. And today we're going to talk about redemption. Everybody say redemption. Last week we talked about grace. We're going to pick up there. And uh, let's read, look at, and read 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 15. 
Can we do this in unison? That means all of us saying it together. I'll start, and if y'all, I'm, I go slow intentionally. I like to express every word, not just run through it, okay? So let's start. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Everybody say gift. 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 That's a strong word in the Bible. We find it in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. We're going to read it again in a moment when we go to Ephesians chapter 2. That's not our basis of Scripture, but that's where we ended last week. I'd like us to go now to James chapter 1 and verse 17. All right? Y'all think y'all can read with me? Can you? Let's try that. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. What that means is, in the Greek language, that God is straight by his word and so straight that you can measure it by his shadow. Not by where he is, but his shadow never even moves off the mark of truth. Mm, That's rich right there. Now, you can chew on that little nugget of steak, and it'll fill you up, and then you can go eat lunch, right? Last week, talking about the indescribable gift, what I did is explain what the word means in Hebrew and Greek, and then we we moved toward, I took different verses in the Bible that use different words for gift. If you did not hear, you were not here, I encourage you, you can go to our website, and oh, it's YouTube channel or Facebook channel. Pick that up. If you need help, we'll get the kindergartners in here to help you find it on your phone. And uh, ha ha, that joke went dead. And uh, so in talking about the gift, we know that God gave his son, Jesus Christ, as the indescribable gift. And that's what we celebrate at Christmas time. I know that Jesus wasn't born on December 25. But I do thank God that I live in a country where we celebrate December 25 and the whole world shuts down, right? And for a moment, we glorify God. If nothing else, if if they never say the name Jesus, it's his birthday still. I can remember when I was probably about college age and my mom's heart was trying to turn to the Lord. My mom was, you know, like a lot of us, raised in church, but life had taken her away from God. And, uh, but she made a big issue. She got this huge cake for the whole family. And, um, before, after lunch, the first dessert that we went to, it said, happy birthday, Jesus. Right. And she made us all focus on him. And I can remember that as a, as a young man and my mom, that was a big change in our house. That never happened before. And, uh, now we celebrated Christmas and we knew it was the birth of Jesus, but we were very limited, right, as a child in that because I didn't go to church much until I got Jesus in my heart and he changed my life, right? The indescribable gift of Jesus Christ. I want you to be thinking about him as your gift today. We're going to look at Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. This is where we closed last week with this passage because I was headed toward here. Last week was about the grace of God. God saved you by his grace when you believed. When you had enough faith, belief in Jesus and his work on the cross, you surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, the gift from God. God's grace made that happen. That word grace is the Greek word charis, And it means gift, by God's gift. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift, a charis from God. It's a grace from God. God graces us with eternal life. He saves us. He changes us. The resurrection power of God gives us life and life eternal. And God is able in our hearts and lives to do mighty things. Amen? Let's look at verse 9. Salvation is not a reward. That actual, that word reward right there is another word in the Greek language that is used for gift, but we'll move on. Salvation is not a reward for the good things. Everybody say good things. Salvation is not something you 
get because you performed well, because you did something good for somebody. So none of us can boast about our salvation because it is a free gift from God that he gave to us through his son, Jesus Christ. The indescribable gift of God is we are saved by his grace. His grace is motivated by his love. John 3, 16, God so loved the world, right? Motivated by his love with a plan in mind to redeem humanity. We're going to look at this in the scripture in just a moment, if you'll indulge me. God has given each of us this indescribable gift of redemption. We're going to talk about grace last week, redemption this week, and I'm going to let you figure out what we're going to do next Sunday. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, Paul opens and he begins to just make a greeting to the church at Ephesus. And then verses 3 through 14. Now, I'm not going to read all that because you'd probably get lost somewhere in the middle and I'd have to catch you and get you back, okay? But we're going to go through here and I'm going to pull out some verses. But you need to take the time on your own as a Christian to go to Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 14 and read. Read it. And underline, when something speaks to you, make a, you, it's all right to mark in your Bible. Did you know that? It really is, okay? Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. Let's look at that. I hope I have it. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus had a daddy in heaven, our heavenly Father, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Where do the spiritual blessings come from? They come from the Father through Jesus. Look at the next part. It says, in the heavenly places in Christ. Every spiritual blessing we receive comes from God the Father, and you insert Jesus. God loved the world, and he sent his son Jesus to be born. He was born in Bethlehem in a manger, right? It's prophesied in the Old Testament Fulfilled in the life of Christ, and Jesus is that baby, right? That baby became a man, amen? And everything that we receive from God comes from that gift of Jesus Christ. Every spiritual blessing refers to all the conceivable gifts of redemption that Christians receive by being united with Jesus Christ. God the Father is the originator and source of every spiritual blessing. It's God, your father, your daddy wants to bless you. Abba, father, he wants to bless you, right? The realm or scope of these gifts, it all funnels through in those two words at the end, in Christ. Only through our identification and union with God's son, Jesus Christ, are we eligible to receive God's untold blessings, the nature of the gift is spiritual, spiritual. Now, God can bless you with other stuff. I'm going to wait on you, right? The blessings of, the God, of God make it, makes us rich, right, with no sorrow to it. If it's a God blessing, there won't be hurt in it, right? It'll be blessed by God. Come on, somebody, okay? The nature of the gifts are spiritual. The Holy Spirit is the, are you ready for this word, executor who applies the work of Christ to our hearts and lives. Is Jesus in the earth? No. Nope. Holy Spirit's here. He is the Lord of the church. Now, we know God is. It's a tri he's a triune God, right? Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Now, don't let that word scare you, right? He's not Casper, right? He's a spirit, though. He is Holy Spirit. Amen. Right. He's not just somebody else. He is God spirit. So what we're going to do today is we're going to look at some of these every spiritual blessings that are in the, these verses 3 through 14 in Ephesians 1. You ready? I want to take you on a little journey. Ooh, we've got plenty of time if I hurry, right? <laughs> All right, let's do it. The gift, number one, the gift of being chosen and predestined 
for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ. I want us to read verse 4 and 5. It says, just as he chose us in him, God chose us in Christ. Everybody say, in Christ. Get ready for this now, because I refer to this all the time. It just comes out of my heart, because I know this truth is in this verse. I'll say, God, God designed your life before you were even born, right? You hear me say that? Well, this is the verse it comes from, okay? I'm finally catching up with what I say, right? Verse, verse 4, I'm going to start over. Just as he chose us in Christ before the, found, before the foundation of the earth ball. Now I want that to sit in your head. Before the earth was formed, it was void, and before the foundation, God had you on his mind. Now that's love. He dreamed about you. He had, Adam's not created yet. He dreamed about Adam. Come on now. Get with me. Let's line this up in our heart right quick, okay? Let me read verse 5. Having predestined us to, to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself. I am adopted. I am a, one of God's adopted kids, right? According to what? The good pleasure of his, God's will. It is God's will that every human being experience this it is God's will that everyone comes to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. That's what God predestined is for humanity to receive Christ, to be made right with God and have fellowship with him. Just as Yahweh chose Israel, Old Testament, if you want to hear a little bit, last month's series was about Israel. It was about Hamas, Palestine, Israel. You can go back and listen to those messages just as Yahweh chose Israel to be his treasured possession, he chooses believers to receive the great honor and privilege of becoming, everybody say becoming, his beloved spiritual children through the redemptive sacrifice of Jesus Christ. I am redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Woo, hallelujah. Our heavenly Father loves us so very much that he calls. 1 John 3, 1 says he calls us his, the Bubba version says kids, right? He calls us his children. I am a child of God. And that is what we are, is what the verse says. We're God's kids. How does it feel to be a child of God? Amen? I've got a heavenly father that lives in my life. The second spiritual blessing that we see is found in verses 6, 7, and 8. The gift of God's glorious grace through his son Jesus. God has given us, he chose us, and he gave us grace. Let's look at verse 6. To the praise of the glory of his grace, <laughs> by which he made us accepted in the beloved. We are loved by God, and when we get in right relationship with God, we are beloved. Notice the first few words. It says, the praise of the glory of his grace. That means grace has glory, and we need, and Paul here is praising the grace because it comes, it's a gift from God, and he's praising. God is in that, right? But he's praising and he's thanking for what God has given us by his grace. Look at verse 7. In him, everybody say in him, we have redemption through his blood. That's powerful now, right? It's a good communion scripture. Come on, somebody. What else? The power of his blood. We get redemption. When you get redemption, you get the forgiveness of sins, right? Right? Even after you saved, you may sin, but you're supposed to, if you're disobedient, you discipline yourselves and you, you confess your faults one to another. You repent when you sin and you quit doing it, right? Don't, the more you entertain sin, the deeper you're going to get in it. It'll become a stronghold. Not preaching that today, but it's still the truth. 
All of this is according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence, which is understanding. God gives us wisdom and understanding, wisdom and prudence because of redemption. It all comes through the grace of God. Paul features the gift of God's glorious grace that he has poured out on us who belong to his dear son. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. He has showered his kindness on us along with all wisdom and understanding. Our heavenly father is rich. He's rich. Did you know God was rich? Right? I'm not just talking about money. That's, that's a resource. When we think of rich people, we say, oh, it's, they got a lot of money. But this is more than money, right? It's more than money. God can bless you with money when you need it, but he wants to bless you with a right relationship with him where being in his presence is what it's all about. That's more valuable than money. Amen? Excuse me. <clears throat> I dropped that little spongy thing. Sorry, David. Our Heavenly Father is rich. And what is he rich in? Grace. How many of you have grace for other people like God had grace for you? I'm going to preach myself in the corner. I got that feeling. What about kindness to people that are hard to be kind to? Right? I, 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 don't get me started. I'm talking about me, not you. Forgiveness. Grace, that change, that gift, that what God gives us, he gives us forgiveness, a forgiving heart like Christ. What about freedom? You are blessed with freedom. I'm not talking about a patriot of the United States. I'm talking about you're free in Jesus Christ. You're no longer a slave to sin. You don't have to live by sin. You, it, it doesn't have to control your life. You can be free from all that garbage and live in peace, right? Wisdom. He's blessed you with wisdom and understanding, and he makes us rich in the same in Jesus Christ, his son. Certainly, not the least of God's blessings in Christ is that we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. That's where it all begins when we come to Jesus, and he doesn't just cover our sins. That's an old covenant promise. He washes them away. Can y'all take something a little bit gross? I won't, I won't do it long. I was raised in, around butcher and stuff, but uh, at the deer camp, we've got a big old covered shed. It's about, oh, it's big. Anyway, got two different boat winches. You can pull a deer up. It's all concrete. And so when we're butchering the deer, where does the blood go? So when we get all that picked up, we have a pile we take all that to for the coyotes and the buzzards to have something to eat, right? And so while we're cleaning up, this one will run down there and the other one gets the water hose out and it's washed away, right? That concrete's clean when we get done. It goes to a drain, runs out somewhere in the earth. It returns, okay? What am I saying? When Jesus' blood is applied to your sins, your sins are a mess and all that's washed away. You can't find that. You can't get that blood back up on that concrete. You might go find a piece of it a little clot or something, but it's gone. It's been power washed. <laughs> the Greek word, the Greek word for redemption in this verse, I cannot say the word without a lot of help. So I'm not going to embarrass y'all to think you have a pastor that doesn't speak Greek well. I can't speak English well, right? But that word refers to this, the act of making full payment to free an enslaved person. They've been redeemed. They've been bought back for the price of Jesus' blood. His body suffered and his blood was shed. When we believe in Jesus and receive him as our Lord and Savior, our sins are forgiven, paid for by his death on the cross. Christ's death satisfies God's demands. God put a demand on humanity. Because of your sin, he does not have relationship with you. Jesus came and fulfilled that demand, and he built the bridge. What's the name of our church? The bridge. 
That's what Jesus did. He built a bridge between God and man, between heaven and earth. It's releasing us from our sins and the death sentence that was on every one of us and on humanity because of sin, making us holy. That's what verse 4 says, right? Holy and blameless in God's sight. When God looks at me, he sees a cleaned up Bubba, right? Amen? Number three, the gift of knowing God's will. We find this in verses 9 and 10. It says, having made known to us the mystery of his will. God makes known to us the mystery of his will. No Christian should ever say, I do not know the will of God. What you're saying is, is I'm not in tune and walking with God when you say that. If you will go to the word, it is a light under your path and it will give you the direction you need. If you spend time reading your Bible, you say, well, I don't understand it. Well, find you a version that you can read and understand. Get in a Bible study. Expose your life to the word and God's will becomes clear and very simple. God Although he could be, we're going to talk about this next week, but he could be very, very in-depth, right? Think about when God created the human body. There are 22 or 30 different kinds of doctors you can go to, right? One knows how to put you to sleep, so another one can cut you open. It's the truth because we have so many functions and systems in our body that it's unreal, right? And we have specialists in all those areas. They're just people. God bless the doctors, amen? And all the people that work with them. God help them, anoint them, use them. That's my prayer, amen? Having made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he purposed in himself. God is pleased to show you his will for your life. I don't know about you, but that's beautiful. What that means is, is God had you on his mind before he made the earth. That's what it says from the foundation. In the beginning, God thought about you before he thought about the earth ball. Amen? That in the dispensation of the fullness of the times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ. Everything you need to know is found in God. Everything. And when you lay down the principles of God's word in obedience in your life and you follow the book, what happens is that opens you up to add to your life. Make God, number one, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. Okay? The bridge. Jesus is that bridge. Paul here, talking about God's will, is speaking about the divine mystery of the New Testament church. You can go look in the Bible and other places. It comes up again in Ephesians. Uh, Just a few chapters later in chapter 5, he talks about the mystery. He compares the marriage relationship. He compares the husband to the church, the imperfect, and he compares the wife to Jesus. Go read it in the Bible. Us boys better tighten up is all I got to say. So this mystery about this New Testament church that exists, it was formally kept a secret before Jesus. Yes, the Hebrews, the Jews had an order of worship. They had an old covenant relationship with God. But Jesus brought forth a new covenant in his blood. And we now exist, the church, the body of Christ, that's what the church is. It's all of us together, bringing forth God's government in the earth. And what we do, we do this at the bridge. We encourage people to find a church they can go to, people that they can love on and be loved by. Come on. Get involved in God's kingdom and build God's kingdom, right? Because it's not about me. It's not about you. We're all under assignment. Right now, this is my assignment. This is what God has me doing, this part in my life. But I promise you, as much as I love being your pastor, if God woke me up or 
just spoke to my heart and said, son, I need you over here to do this. I would have to either obey or disobey. And it's the same way for all of us. We need to be obedient to God's voice, God's will that we just talked about. We need to be in the will of God. You could talk to Jesus. Jesus, as a human in the Garden of Gethsemane, he wasn't real excited about being crucified. He knew what was coming. He understood it from his father, and he cried out, if this cup may pass. He knew it wasn't going to pass. Before they designed the world, Jesus had his assignment. This is how it's going to work. And they were in agreement. Jesus knew what was going on. It was not a surprise to him. I have learned that sometimes being in God's will is not always about me being happy or me being satisfied. Sometimes God will take me places that I need to go so I can be more like him. It's a walk of faith, right? Hallelujah. If you're feeling uncomfortable, that's the Holy Spirit. I love you because it makes me uncomfortable, right? Paul is speaking about this divine mystery of how the church, the human race, operates in the church. To share equally in the gospel of salvation, we are one new people. There is no more human race when you become a Christian. All of our blood is the same. It's the blood of Jesus that has saved us. And it makes us a family. It doesn't matter what color somebody's skin is. It doesn't matter what they, where they live or what they drive. It doesn't matter how they dress. Come on, somebody. I've been to some phenomenal churches in places in the world where they didn't even own a Bible. It was illegal to have a Bible there. And the power of God was there. You felt it before you got there. It was so strong. It's amazing. I'm not going to call any country names. I've been in places and villages in Africa where we went there to do a crusade or do a service to invite them and ask them to come to a crusade, go there and minister to people. And those people don't have a whole lot. They really don't. They live a very basic life. They eat basically what they can grow. And you don't grow cows to sell them at the market. You grow them for milk, right? Truthfully. John Melissa, who's in Rwanda, overseas ministry there. He's been in this church many times. Another son in the ministry. Uh, John, until he was 12 years old, was raised on cow's milk. That's all he had. They were poor. Amen? Preach, pastor. Keep moving. Don't indulge us. Right? Prejudiced of the, toward anybody in the human race We need to be very careful of our attitude because Jesus' attitude was he was willing to die for them. We've got to be careful what we say about people. Any race you want to name, right? And I preach the same message in other nations of the world. I say that because they don't need to have an attitude toward me or any other white person, right? We're all in the same family. Hallelujah. That's for somebody. Okay, not in my notes, right? Number four, and I'll close. The gift of being sealed by the Holy Spirit. Boy, I can get off deep right here, and I'm going to share probably a little bit of opinion. I don't have it in notes, but let's look at verse 13 and 14. It says in verse 13, in him, everybody say, in him, You also trusted. The faith that you operated is not your own faith. Your faith is in trusting in Jesus Christ. After you heard the word of truth, after you heard the gospel of what Jesus did, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also, having believed, that's becoming a Christian, all that right there, in him you also trusted. Look at, the, look at the next part. Not only is Jesus involved in that, but the Holy Spirit is involved in your salvation process. I know we say you need to ask Jesus into your heart, and I, I'm not here to present theology, but Jesus isn't in your physical heart. He's, God is alive in your spirit. 
that is in. Man is a, a, a just like God is a triune God, we're a triune being. We're, we're spirit, soul, and body, right? You see my body. You see how my attitude is my mind. It's not always right, right? My will, my emotions, right? Hallelujah. It goes on to say that last part. So once we've had this salvation process, right, and we've had that happen, what's in red, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. The Spirit of God seals that salvation process in us. As a Christian, have you ever sinned and you didn't feel good about it? That's because the Holy Spirit does not allow sin in your life. And when you commit that sin, he's going to speak to you. Are you ready? Are you ready to make that change, right? That's what it's about is when the Holy Spirit says, hey, don't act that way anymore. He wants to adjust what's in our heart and in our life, right? Because we've gone outside the boundaries of God's word. God wants us to live and be obedient to his word. I'm going to keep reading. Thank you. Verse 14. Who is, who, who's who right there? The Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the guarantee of our inheritance. All of these spiritual blessings that God has for us, that's our inheritance. It comes through the Holy Spirit. Could you go back a slide, please? Thank you. And what is the Holy Spirit? Look at the last line on that slide. He is the Holy Spirit of promise. Why is that there? Because not only is he in the believer, but Jesus himself said, John the Baptist prophesied, and Jesus promised before he left, John the Baptist prophesied, he who is coming after me, talking about Jesus, is mightier than I. I'm not even worthy to take his shoes off and clean his feet. He will, I baptize you in water. He will baptize you in the Holy Spirit. That is a different experience after salvation. And it's manifested in different ways in different people's lives. And everybody has their own experience of being baptized in the Holy Spirit. And from that come the gifts of the Spirit. Not talking about that today. Going to try to get to it in 2024. I've been saying that for a couple years, but I'm going to try this year to teach on them. Every spiritual blessing includes the truth we have obtained, a heavenly inheritance. Everything you receive from God, when it's revealed in his words, oh man, that becomes, once you have the knowledge, the revelation knowledge, and understand the scripture, you're now not just a revelator, you are a responsible you have to be responsible for what you know. That means that's how we grow up. I do things today that I didn't do when I was eight years old. I didn't know them, right? I didn't know I needed to save my, my, um, my money from doing chores around the house and that it would grow, right? I had to learn that the hard way, right? I had to learn to discipline myself and say no to spending and whatever. And you develop your life over time. It's the same way spiritually. When the word is revealed to your heart and life and you understand it, you know it is truth, you're now responsible to live that word, okay? We are marked with God's seal, the Holy Spirit, who provides us with spiritual security and proof of ownership. In eternity, we will take full possession of everything, our full total inheritance. Let me ask you this. Let's say that your mom and dad had built quite a nest egg and they pass away and they leave you that inheritance. That's pretty cool, isn't it? What they earned and planned for and developed and got for you, all of a sudden it's a gift for you. And that's exactly what this is talking about. Everything that is in God, everything that God has done for us is a gift from him that we receive in our inheritance. But the only way you get the inheritance is if someone dies. Wow. If it's an inheritance, someone has to die. Jesus died so we could inherit all the good things from our Heavenly Father 
that he has prepared for us. Every spiritual blessing encompasses all the gifts from Father God, from Jesus' Son, and from Holy Spirit. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3. I probably didn't put that one in there. Thank you. As Listen closely. As his divine power has given to us all things, say all things, God's divine power that pertain to life, everything you need in life, God has for you. And godliness, not only for your life and your living, but also for your spiritual life and living. Through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. God's got a lot of good stuff for us, right? Now, we're going to celebrate Christmas this year. And we're going to rejoice in the Lord. Jesus' birth, y'all heard me say, for years I got this. I started doing this years ago. I, I tell people Merry Christmas in the summertime, you know, because they'll say, it's not Christmas. Every day is Christmas, right? Because I, I get the gifts. <laughs> it's the truth. I've been given so many great and wonderful, precious promises, right? So many gifts from the Lord, right? Just his presence and his blessing. And, you know, when you hit a stump, you don't get thrown off the tractor, right? I'm talking about life. He just catches you and he holds you there. And he protects you and he keeps you. He watches out for you. Praise the Lord. Believers in Jesus, when you are a believer in Jesus, there are no shortages or no reasons to not praise God. You've got more than enough to rejoice over, right? Worship is not something we do in the sanctuary this is celebration time. This is learning time. This is being exposed to our, our family that we do life with. But you know what? You can spend time with the Lord anytime, anywhere, and practice his presence. You can be sitting about to have a root canal out in the waiting room, right? Take you a few minutes, and Jesus is there. I promise. My dentist is a anointed, full of the Holy Ghost Christian, so... We just have fun, right? You say a root canal's fun? They don't hurt. They're not that bad. I don't believe in pain, right? <laughs> I'm pulling your leg. Y'all know that, right? Yeah. It uh, said the pastor whose knee's out of joint and stiff, right? Uh, but it doesn't hurt. It just feels like somebody filled it with concrete, <laughs> We're going to do something different today, uh, and y'all need to be resilient. How many of you can be resilient with me? Can y'all do that? Uh, let's do this. This is very different. Charles Proctor is at Baptist in Little Rock. We're going to call him on the phone and pray for him. Can we do that as a church? Yeah. If y'all, Kathy's not immobile, but it's difficult for her to walk. Would everybody over here, let's move over here. We can surround and make a big crowd. And uh, I'm going to see if I can get him on the phone. If he doesn't, we'll, if I can't get him, we'll just dismiss. We're going to surprise him. <laughs> you don't have to talk. Okay. Now, David. Do I need to hold the phone up to this mic and we'll hear him? I'm going to put him on speaker, right? Excuse me. <coughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all can go ahead and start praying for Charles and Kathy. Uh, Kathy had a stroke. It's been over two years ago now, I believe. And she walked in here today. I don't think she had her cane. Somebody come in whipping her with it. All right, here we go. Baptist Hospital. I'm going to get the receptionist first. Thank you for calling Baptist Health Medical Center, Little Rock. This call may be monitored or recorded for quality. Well, I'm going to do something else first. I got to know his room number and it's in here. I'm sorry. Let me see how I can see that. Edit. 757. All right, we're going to go again. Room 757. 
Thank you for calling Baptist Health Medical Center, Little Rock. This call may be monitored or recorded for quality assurance purposes. Please remain on the line and an operator will assist you shortly. All operators are busy assisting other callers. Please hold for the next available operator. Thank you. Technology. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for healing Dad Proctor. Glory to God. I talked with him last night. He was surprised I called. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. All operators remain busy assisting other callers. If you need to sit down, you can sit down. Thank you, sweetie. Lord, we just want to thank you for who you are. I want to thank you for the gifts that you have so kindly given all of us. We speak healing for Charles Proctor. Miracle by medicine or miracle of God by your great and mighty power, Lord. Let him right now, even while we're waiting, Lord, help him to sense, for the delay. feel, An and operator know. Will be with you as quickly as possible. Thank, thank you, you, Jesus. Room 757, please. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. He's not expecting this. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hello? Is this Charles Proctor? It is. This is your pastor. Yes, sir. And uh, there's a bunch of people here in the sanctuary. We're going to pray for you. Y'all say hello. Hello. We love you. Yeah. (laughs) He said hello. I I spoke over him. Uh, How you doing today? Well, I'm doing, uh, I guess, really good. They're going to let me go home this afternoon. Oh, my. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Well, if you want to stay up there and eat, you might get you a good meal. Yeah. <laughs> a good night's rest, huh? <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Come on, church, let's rejoice. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Thank you, Lord. In your mighty name, Lord, we thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord, healing is in the children's bread. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for touching Charles and healing his body in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Praise the Lord. Amen. Lord, I pray for Dad Proctor that you would continue to strengthen his body, spirit, soul, body, energized by the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost in Jesus' name. Give him wisdom and understanding. And Lord, give it, watch over him. We pray for protection, direction, and revelation in Jesus' name. We give you all the glory. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> well, this time instead of Kathy telling me what's going on, she got to hear me talk to you and know what's going on. <laughs> She's right here. Tell her hi. Come get him. Home this so okay. To come down here. Yes. Tell him, tell him I'm go home. Yeah, I think Greg's on his way down there already. Oh, they were coming to see you and bringing uh, Donna and the kids and everything, right? Okay. So they'll surprise you here in a minute. Don't tell them I told you, all right? That was the word yesterday evening anyway, okay? But right. I'll, call, I'll call him and make sure, okay? Okay. All right. Hey, we love you. If you need something, call. Everybody say love you. Love you. All right. Uh huh. He said love y'all. What? 
Dave's. Uh, stop at Mr. Dave's and have a cheeseburger with bacon. Extra onions. <laughs> Love you. He's, he'd, already hung, he'd already hung up. You'll have to tell him about Dave's, I think. Ah, uh, praise the Lord, somebody. Amen. Church isn't always like this, but today it was. God bless you. Y'all have a great week, and uh, the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Have a great day and a great week. We'll see you Sunday. Bring somebody with you. Amen. So deep. No.